Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Let me just. Uh, this. I think you can go to the slideshow. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the slides? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much for this invitation. Assalamu alaikum, belated Eid Mubarak. So we're going to get started. Best approach for failed integrated approach to uh, below the knees uh, chronic total occlusions. So we know that critical limb ischemia is a prevalence of CLI is driven by increased life expectancy and global diabetes epidemic. Patients with CLI frequently have tibial occlusive disease. There's a big paradigm shift to an endo first option. Inability to cross CTOs remain the biggest reason for treatment failure and major amputations. So our options after anti-grade fails is uh, transcollateral pedal uh, uh, access, and then we could also use the pedal arch as a collateral uh, to revascularize tibial occlusions. So this CTOP classification helps us identify uh, CTOs into four types based on their cat morphology, based on if it's uh, concave or convex. And pretty much what this helps us do is uh, identify which lesions, you know, are most likely going to have a failure via an integrate approach. Uh, and that way we can not spend too much time and quickly uh, go to a retrograde approach to go to pedal axis. So this is just breaking down to the four types. As you can see, you know, a type one, you may be able to do uh, integrate successfully, but the other types most likely will require uh, retrograde access. So pedal access has vastly improved our ability to cross CTOs. Factors that favor the need for pedal access and retrograde crossing uh, is the CTO type, as I showed on that slide. If it's heavily calcified, you're more likely to fail anti-grade. Lesion length greater than 100 centimeters, most likely uh, to fail anti-grade. Uh, this is just uh, mapping out anterior tibial and, and uh, dorsalis pedis access. We should all be very familiar with ultrasound. This is showing the anterior tibial artery, the veins collapse, as you see over here. And this is just showing as we enter uh, the anterior tibial artery in a longitudinal view, we could see the wire uh, going through the true lumen. Mm -hmm. This is looking at the posterior tibial artery, the location of the artery uh, uh, and the veins. This is a nice little map uh, that it's good to familiarize with. with. And this is the uh, perineal artery. Often we just use uh, bony landmarks uh, and, and we're able to get perineal access. Now we'll get to some cases. This is a 68-year-old male, hypertension, end-stage renal disease on hemodialysis, all the traditional risk factors, non-healing ulcer, uh, the amputation on the toe site's not healing, uh, big smoker. And what we see on the angiogram is we see a very calcified, uh, long anterior tibial artery occlusion. You see a trick of flow, and you see it reconstitute above the ankle. So despite multiple wires unable to cross from an anti-grade approach, there's a wire getting stuck, get pedal access, uh, and then here you see the wire coming up from the, from the retrograde approach, was able to cross this occlusion, uh, fairly simple, uh, externalize the wire, perform orbital atherectomy, uh, and then sequential PTA, and you see nice uh, inflation in the balloon without a waste. And here you see a very nice result in the anterior tibial artery. Nice blush into the, uh, into the toes. This is a more of a complex case, 85 year old male, uh, all these uh, risk factors with a gangrenous first and second digit. So again, we see a long anterior tibial artery occlusion. You see the reconstitution point over here. Anti-grade wiring was unsuccessful. So here you see the initial angiogram, you see the dorsalis pedis come back. And now you see we were able to get uh, access in the dorsalis pedis and you see the wire trying to traverse. However, due to the heavy calcium, uh, the wire was uh, unable to remain true lumen and I went sub So you have a wire in uh, both 
um, uh, subintimal planes were able to uh, perform a uh, reverse cart and then get the wire um, into the true lumen. And you see the final angiogram. The AT looks, uh, looks great. This was uh, done with PTA and I did have to place some drug looting stents in the anterior tibial artery uh, to achieve this result. Here's a final foot angio. So the traditional approach when crossing retrograde is just, you know, I often just use an O1H support catheter uh, and then, you know, traditional wires such as a command, a V18, uh, a glide wire. Uh, this is a more complex, more complex case. 71 year old male diabetes, hypertension, uh, who had, who's got severe PAD, has got a non-healing ulcer of the heel and the toe. So two distributions. Here's our initial angio, shows a flush occlusion of the TP trunk and then severely diseased and then later occludes uh, of the anterior tibial artery. So we're able to revascularize the anterior tibial artery from anti-grade approach. Here you see that we're true lumen and on the injection, you kind of see the, uh, the plantar arch. This is after anterior tibial artery uh, atherectomy and angioplasty. And then what we did in this case, we, we used the, the uh, pedal arch uh, as a conduit to uh, revascularize the uh, posterior tibial artery. So we went down the anterior tibial artery across the arch and able to work our way all the way back up and get true lumen uh, into the popliteal artery, externalize the wire, and then perform, uh, we did laser atherectomy, angioplasty, and I did put one uh, stent in that posterior tibial artery. And you see the final result with now a patent anterior tibial artery, patent posterior tibial artery, and a complete uh, plantar arch. And this allowed the patient to heal both uh, his heel ulcer and his toe ulcer. Now the transcollateral approach. Um, so again, we got careful assessment of the anatomy of collateral vessels, the sole source of circulation of lower extremity. You got to be uh, extremely careful as you can convert a CLI patient and an ALI patient if you uh, damage that collateral. And the, for the tibials, the collaterals that we're gonna try to use is the, uh, for the, in the perineal, the anterior communicating branch to the AT and the posterior communicating branch to the PT uh, to the posterior tibial artery. Plantar arch collateral, uh, as we just demonstrated, AT, a, the PTA. So this is um, the technique. As you go down the, the perineal, you see the collateral uh, uh, into the anterior tibial artery. So again, you want to use kind of your CTO, your, you know, um, uh, support catheters, your 014 support catheters, trying to get, get through, use a hydrophilic wire to kind of traverse it. We use the regalia wire um, and we're able to navigate our way up the anterior tibial artery and uh, get true lumen. Unfortunately on this, the, uh, the angios got kind of crashed, but that was, uh, that's the whole technique on using the collateral uh, to revascularize. So conclusions in complex uh, below the knee uh, CTOs, anterograde failure may be as high as 30%. You know, so we have to kind of have it ready. Uh, the foot should always be prepped and we have it in our minds that when we have a below the knee occlusion that we have to uh, have a very low threshold to go pedal to go retrograde in order to improve success rates, reduce major amputation, improve uh, survival in patients with CLI. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh we Dr. Zahn, I have a question for you. What's up? What's going on? Um, this is uh, Suhail, Suhail Khan. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, so uh, in, in the era of, of uh, uh, you know, the, the best CLI, which just came out a few months ago, uh, which has shown, you know, some superiority of uh, surgical bypass over endovascular, again, this is uh, debatable. And I see you see a lot of... Uh, do a lot of complicated cases, uh, you know, uh, transcollateral and retrograde. Has it changed your practice? What are your views on best CLI data? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. I mean, I think the, uh, 
you know, the real important thing to, to break down the best CLI study is that it really took a long time for them to enroll patients uh, to, to really get that equipoise. Uh, you know, so the patients tend to be younger, you know, had uh, really suitable veins. And to find those patients again, you know, they, they ran out of funding. They had to ask for other money. The, it was a very prolonged study. Um, and also you have to compare, it was really good surgery versus subpar uh, 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 endovascular uh, uh, treatment. The failure rates um, were ex exceedingly high. Re-intervention rates up to 50% at, at the month. I mean, it was just, it was very average or subpar endovascular uh, intervention. So, I mean, I think those things really factored in. But I mean, I do think, you know, if you have a younger patient you know, with a, you know, very long, you know, complex CTO that does have a suitable vein, uh, you know, I think you can certainly think about, you know, definitely uh, think about surgery uh, in those settings. But, uh, you know, often the time, you know, we rarely do we burn bridges with our endovascular attempts. Recording in progress. Uh, so, I mean, I think, you know, I think it does uh, provide some validity to that surgical bypass, uh, you know, is an effective way for, for CLI patients. But the practicality is, you know, it takes a long time to really find those patients that have true equipoise. And I think the, the poor endovascular intervention kind of drove down the, uh, uh, the findings, very low use of atherectomy, very low use of uh, drug coated balloons. Um, so I don't think it was optimal endovascular intervention. Yeah, again, the learning point for me was, that I think uh, doing these complicated cases, we need to have uh, some sort of uh, credentialing for any operator or the hospital. Uh, there has to be a best uh, CLI programs and who does a lot of these, not someone who can just walk in and start doing the wires. So that's the, the point that I got from that trial is that, you know, if, if in good hands, uh, I think that the endovascular, you know, uh, outcomes are as good as, you know, surgical. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, Professor uh, Raha. Uh, do you want to comment? Can you? Yeah. Uh, you want me to have comment for this? Yeah, for the previous presentation. Uh, yes, I, I think that uh, the best, uh, especially the failed anterior approach in classified region, the uh, no other option because the uh, the failed case usually associated with the uh, some chance of. Uh, Mm, the bait out condition, which can lead to the uh, mm, disaster uh, that can cause the limb loss, because the, the, the all the this situation patients uh, 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 main uh, situation uh, for the critical limb ischemia. So the one uh, resolution, definite resolution, is to. Uh, the escape this situation by the, the come down of the dissected flap by the another intraluminal approach by the the retroid approach either by trans set trans uh, collateral or the retro rate so the uh, finding the retro rate or the trans septal root is a very very key point so uh, my real uh, the essential comment for this title is before starting the uh, tough case integrate before starting integral approach the baseline key imaging analysis should be done before uh, starting aggressive wiring otherwise uh, once you uh, lose the all the integrate all the promising uh, uh, good uh, channels supplying the if lateral channels or the all the other main perfusion uh, sources for the uh, indirect or direct uh, supplying uh, blood channels, and then you will lose all the uh, good uh, uh, supplying or the energy source for the critical limb ischemia. So uh, the, the, another point is we have to be trained to. Uh, overcome how to negotiate the, the trans septal and the trans the, the dosal pedal rubach how to 
negotiate all the torture city and how to decide the weapon selection. I mean, the, the wire selection and the, uh, the size of a balloon and the length or the pressure, the all the, and that are not shown on the textbook or the journal. So that should be, uh, you know, uh, experienced by expert hand. So uh, that is very important to prevent all the future <coughs> Uh, uh, complication. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramazan Zakir, for your excellent talk. Now, for the sake of time, we will move to our next talk, which will be given by Muhammad Mehdi Ansari and acute limb ischemia, uh, which is uh, very common in our, uh, in our part of the world. And uh, he will be talking interventional strategy to save the limb.